Good morning, everybody. Look at this, winter's back in Southern Ontario. We're making snow like mad, and hopefully get a couple more runs open here for the weekend. Well, at least one in the T-bars anyway, so we'll show you the progress we're making. Here's one of our SMI polecats working away. Making a beautiful pile over there. Now have a look at the runs we're working on, so come along. All right, well you can see here we got uh, snow making well underway. This uh, is the big tree run. And I uh, got some nice piles going in here. We should have the uh, groomers in tomorrow afternoon to get her all pushed out and hopefully have her ready for Saturday. Uh, current temperature is minus six and I think it's supposed to go down to minus eight or nine this evening. So we should be making some very good piles. I love it. God, good for the soul to see this. Yeah, let's go check on the uh, next one, which is uh, Devil's Staircase. Okay, so here's one of our new HKDs. One of the sled guns doing a great job here. Now, I'll just show you the differences in what we call stick or air water guns. Here's an older generation over here. You can see at the bottom that there is no valve body. Basically, your flow control and your um, how you would set it for um, temperature, for the right amount of snow, or to run the gun efficient, efficiently, depending on your temperature, is all uh, based on the uh, nozzles. So you have to manually crank that gun down, change the nozzles out if you really want to get it to the optimum efficiency of it. For on your new cell guns, you have a valve body. So the new HKD system is fantastic. You have your chart down here at the bottom. So depending on what your temperature is, you go from one through five, cycling down. So what that's gonna do is on your lowest setting, you're gonna have a lot of air. Well, a lot, a lot for this particular gun. And as you move up, you're gonna increase your water and then you're gonna decrease your air while increasing your water. So by the time you get to setting five, there's very little air because you have a very cold temperature and a whole bunch of water. And that's where you really start to make your snow. But this setup lets you um, keep the gun at efficient operating through a bunch of different temperatures. So really nice how that uh, technology has come around. Okay, so here we are at the base of Devil's Staircase. And you can see we're just hammering it uh, behind me. These guys over here are old HKD Millennials. They're about ooh, 40, 45 years old, and uh, they still make great snow. Again, uh, as with the other guns, the only way to really get them optimized is to change the uh, nozzles. So if you know you have a cold stretch coming in, you're going to put larger nozzles so you have more water. And if you're doing some marginal, then you want to put the smaller ones in. Of course, what pretty much everyone does is go mid-range and... Uh, try to do what you can with that just because it is a bit of a pain in the butt uh, lowering those things but they're great old guns you get lots of fall time with it and they generally in your high wind areas uh, they don't throw the snow all that far so it's nice to have it drop it pretty much uh, dead center on the run which works fantastic here and then this old boy here well, let's have a closer look he's uh, very near and dear to our hearts okay pardon the noise but I had to introduce you guys to dear Frank over here Frank started life off uh, as a Turbo Crystal snow gun. Uh, Turbo Crystal was purchased by HKD. So old Frank, he's about my age, the mid 40s. And uh, he's been sitting in the boneyard for years just because he wasn't very efficient at marginal temperatures. So what we did is order a uh, kit from SMI. So the uh, halo on him just right here is all new along with the controls and the valve system. And now he's one of our best snow guns. You kind of see his trailer is a little on the heavy side, so he generally stays on the flats. We don't like put him on the hills, but uh, he's our best gun. You want to make a lot of snow? Get Frank out there. Oh, and I almost forgot. Frank does have an Instagram account. He's kind of the voice of operations here at Mansfield, so feel free to look him up. It's Frank Snow Gun. Okay, everybody. I've been meaning to do this for a while, but let's have a quick tour of the compressor room here. Uh, we have 400 horsepower compressors in here. They're actually really cool units. Um, I'm used to working with uh, screw compressors and generally you very much need hearing protection. These ones are all self-enclosed and uh, really cool. So when I, they showed up the same time I did and uh, 
so far I think they're working better than I am, but that's okay. We got about, this is our uh, third season with them and uh, they do a great job. So it's gonna be a little loud in there. So I thought I'd talk about it now, but basically four compressors, 100 horsepower. They um, talk to one another through a central system so that they're all getting the exact, or exact, they're all getting roughly the same amount of hours off. They'll cycle each other off. So when one has been running for several hours, it'll shut down, fire up the next one. And then if we really need all of the air, then they'll all be running at the same time. But it's a really neat setup how they work. So let's have a quick look. Okay, so it might be a touch loud, but generally you can't hear yourself think. Here they are. So these louvers will control the amount of cool air coming in to optimize it for the compressors. New status. TPSI. See we've got our temperatures. Here's our main control here. Really cool. Ooh, it's windy in there. So, sorry guys, I, there's a lot of technical data on them and if folks are interested, I'm happy to get that for you. I am not a, officially a snowmaker. I am a ski lift mechanic with a bit of work on groomers. I can make snow, but I'm not as in depth with the system. That's a gentleman named Colin is a great asset and he knows these things inside out. Well, I wanna thank you all for watching. Uh, we're gonna do, what, a startup, I think tomorrow of a Doppelmeyer quad, fixed grip. So nothing too exciting, but we'll do that for you. And uh, yeah, we'll see what else has in store. Any other interesting stuff coming up. Thanks again, everyone for watching. Take care, see you on the next one.